Hey guys, uh, welcome to another how-to video. Uh, this time, it's going to be about how to installing Oregon Trail 3. So, recently stumbled upon this game after you know seeing some comments in the original how-to video of to install Oregon Trail 2 on 64-bit operating systems. So I figured I'd give this one a try. The uh, first thing you want to do um, is going to be to install three different pieces of software uh these ones i feel is imperative to get this thing up and running because from what i found out there isn't a way to trick the game into thinking you have uh like any of the iso images or anything like that uh on your computer without mounting them or anything like that or in the Oregon Shell 2 how to video uh changing like a changing a line in a INI file to say this is where all my data shit is. Uh no, this time we're gonna have to get three different pieces of software. Um one of which is uh going to be uh 7-zip. So 7-zip um this is one of the things I'd recommend getting, especially when it comes to extracting any kind of .zip or .rar files or anything like that. Uh, this makes everything a lot easier to kind of handle and to take care of. The other program is going to be folder to ISO. This one is going to be mainly uh, to do with uh, pretty much making a folder into an ISO so then you can mount it properly and then the game will see it. The third program is going to be Daemon Tools Lite. Uh, Daemon Tools will be uh, what we're going to be mounting the ISO to. Daemon Tools Lite is free to use, especially for the personal edition, so uh, you won't have to worry about anything there. And of course, the game. The game is located on, can be found on any abandonware websites out there. Uh, typically, if you were to look up abandonware on Google, typically your first result is going to be either a Wikipedia page or the actual website where you can find abandonware and then search for the game and get that downloaded and whatnot. Once you have everything downloaded, however, you can then, at that point, go to and uh, just download them all into one folder. You should have three .iso files, one indicating for each uh, separate CD. So the big thing, we're, what we're going to do is instead of like juggling CDs and everything like that, or virtual disks and mounting them and all that kind of stuff, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to extract each individual one into a main folder. So what we're going to do is just go to new fo new folder. Let's call it OT3 ISO. And then uh, what we're going to want to do is uh, since we got 7-zip installed, we can right click on each one of these ISO fo uh, files here with 7-zip open archive. And this, will, and this is the contents of the first ISO. So what we want to do is just select everything, do control A, and then just drag it into the OT3 ISO folder. It'll take a little bit of time to do, of course. Once that fully completes, we want to do the exact same thing for the second one. And yes, you want to also include this Oregon Trail 2 C or Oregon Trail CD2 file in there as well. So copy that in there as well. Hit yes to all whenever if it asks you. Let's let it do its thing. Goes out of that. Number three. Again, same thing. Click and drag, yes to all. And replace the files if it asks you to. Pulls out a 7-zip, and then we got our 
the skeleton of our ISO folder or ISO image here. So next what we want to do is open up folder to ISO, which looks like this. This will be the main uh, thing here. It's a pretty bare bones program. But what we're going to do is uh, select the folder that we want to create into an ISO, go to the same location as before, select folder, select the output to the same folder, but we'll go back one. So it just goes back to where uh, we originally made the folder for the .iso file. Name it something, let's say uh, OT3 ISO. No, not go into the folder. And hit save. OK, OT3, there. And then it's generated the ISO, ISO file. So it'll take a little bit of time, not too long, hopefully. But this is all that we we're going to be using this program for. And with Daemon Tools installed, Calls that one when it's done. With Daemon Tools installed, it should automatically associate every .iso file with um, uh, as mountable or anything like that. So next, what we want to do is uh, create the folder where we're going to house the game itself. And uh, when we go into that, uh, I made one in, pre in preparation for that. It's in just in a different folder. As you can see, it's empty. But one of the things that we're going to want to do first is uh, go back into the ot3cd1.iso uh, uh, thing here. Go to 7-zip, open archive again. Go back into the blank uh, folder we made before. And there's going to be a few different files that we're going to want to take from the cd1iso and put them in, that, in the empty folder we have behind us here. So a lot of them are going to be located in the archive folder here. So open up archive. And then under programs, we're actually going to take these two and move them in, copy them there. So this will be the main executable file for Oregon Trail 3. So then if we go back a step, we actually want to take all these other ones and deselect programs, but we want to make sure we have the, fo the folders highlighted here and drag them over as well. That technically should be all we need to get this up and running. So if, uh, if we are to go to our My Computer here, we can see that we have nothing uh, mounted as far as the vir virtual disk goes. If we open it up, you can see that it opens the game. Go to new game, beginner, but it's going to say please insert CD1. So we can't exactly play the game yet. That's why we made the .iso file here. So typically, by default, if it has the file association uh, set up correctly through Daemon Tools, you should just need to double click on it. It'll it'll say it mounted it properly. If you go back to my computer, it shows up right there. So if we go back in OT3. I can double click on it. And we should be able to run it just perfectly fine. Well, now look here. Another greenhorn pioneer all set to head out on the trail. And from what it looks like, I played through majority of the original trail. I can actually, uh, let's actually open it up here. I don't have anything, of course, because it's a brand new thing. So, that's technically how you get Oregon Trail 3 to run on any Windows uh, 10, you know, 7, 8, 10, 64-bit version of, you know, Windows. So if you have any questions, ask them out in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them, if at all possible. But that is the extent of how to get Oregon Trail 3 to be installed on your computer and running. Thanks for watching.